we go live and we are live hey everyone hey. welcome hey welcome to uh this is svt time i almost forgot where i was there for a minute it's been <laughs> it's been, it's been a little while since we've uh since we've done uh, an svt time um everyone welcome my uh my name is dino monoxilis dom is he's out today actually he's like i was telling brian early he's he's actually one of us that has a gig this week so he's not going to be working. joining us yeah, yeah and, uh <laughs> hey, I uh just a quick introduction, man. We've got Brian Allen uh visiting us today from Nashville. Brian, what's up, brother? How are you? Man, it's so good to see you, Dino, as always. It's been uh been too long, my friend. Yeah, uh, but... I think I, I think it was Nashville two summers ago. That's right. Nashville yeah. Nam, yeah. For yeah. like the light Nam show light. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly. The the <laughs> the quasi Nam show, as we call yeah, it. Yeah, that was that was a bizarre bizarre show for sure yeah but, yeah so just to give everybody a little bit of a background here brian and i and, and forgive me if i if if i embarrass you a little bit here i don't think it will be embarrassing but brian and i go all the way back to the hollywood days at musicians institute at bit we're we're both teachers both students then teachers you know we we kind of coexisted at, at mi for how many years was it brian probably Oh wow! I, I mean, how long how long were you there? I was I was in L.A. for probably about ten years total. Okay, um, because I know you split at one point, but I don't recall what year that was. Yeah, ninety ninety seven ninety eight is when I left to come back here to Boston. Oh wow! So, okay, I thought it was yeah. later than that even. Okay, because no. yeah. I I showed up there in ninety five. Okay. Oh so wow! We only, I guess we only spent a few years together. Not long. Yeah, yeah. It but, seemed, uh, seemed like a lifetime. It did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood will do that to you. <laughs> In the best way possible, though. You of, know? Course. of course. No, that I gotta say, like at Musicians Institute was probably one of one of the best times of my life. Oh, I, for I've sure. met I've met my lifelong friends such as yourself and so many other people there that I, I would never have met had I not been there. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite things to say is like I basically have a place to crash all over the world. <laughs> exactly. You know, <'Cause> exactly. <laughs> it's just such a great, great experience there. You know, it's like, yeah. man, just meeting people from everywhere and just that instant culture shock. You know, because I came from the Midwest, Indiana, and uh, I was eighteen. I had a suitcase and a base, and I was like, "I'm going to Hollywood. Let's go." You know, my mom was like, "Not into it." <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like. Are, you're out of your mind. I was like, well, yeah, that's why I'm leaving here and going there where everybody's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> it, it just seemed like it needed to happen. So, so uh, you moved right out, basically right out of high school to Hollywood. Yeah. I, uh, I took the summer three months and I actually worked to this day, knock on wood. My only real day job was a, as an electrician. And uh -huh. uh, my brother, my brother worked for this company and he's like, Hey, you want a summer job? You know? And I was like, yeah, sure. Make a little extra money because obviously LA wasn't cheap. So yeah. every little bit helps. And uh, I was teaching bass lessons at a local music store too. So I was doing that as well in the evenings. And uh, yeah, you know, so I worked as an electrician for three months. The first day it was 110 degrees and I was up in an attic and I was like, pulling yeah, wires, pulling <laughs> wire, you know, insulation all over my face. First minute. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do everything in my power to not have to do this as a God bless anybody that does that. Right. You know, my brother's thriving. He's got a business and he's doing great, you know, yep. and yep. he just, he kills it, but it's just, I just, it wasn't my thing, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was, you know, I get too hot. I throw up and just, you know, overheat. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not built for this, man. <laughs> nah, you know, it's yeah. And I, I mean, similar story, you know, I was a truck driver at the time and I drove, oh, drove, a, I I drove a big, yeah. I drove a big rig around new England for about, almost seven, eight years for my family trucking company. And, and it was kind wow. of the same thing. It's like, yeah, no, I, this is, this is going to be the death of me. If I continue to do this, I need to, because we have, obviously as musicians, we have something inside of us that I don't know, for lack of a better term, it is, it has to come out somehow. And if we don't Absolutely. find a way to get that out of us in mm -hmm. some ways, we self-destruct in a lot of, I, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of my friends self-destruct for that reason, you Man. know, 100 percent yeah so, absolutely so would you like would you recommend like i mean you know you, you obviously you know grow, grew up in in a small town in indiana i, I grew up in mm -hmm. a small town in in mass and 
uh, although I, I was, what, what was the closest city to where you were growing up? Well, Indianapolis, um, okay. but it still didn't really have much going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and then Louisville and a little further Chicago. Right. So right. Chicago was really like the main big city, you know. Okay. And uh, okay. I was actually really attracted. I almost moved there just because it was a big city and it was, you know, not too far yeah. away. But yeah. I was just like, I, I, the thing that sold me for LA was a, a brochure for MI, one of my brother's bandmates had. My brother's 10 years older. He's the whole reason. Oh, I can get back into that later. But anyway, yeah. I went to one of his band rehearsals and there's an MI brochure. Billy Sheehan's on the cover, of course. Yeah. Yeah. He ruled the day back then. <laughs> <coughs> yep. And kind of still does. But um, I was going to say, he kind of does still. Yeah. I know. It's just like, oh, God. And he moved to Nashville. So I'm like, cool. Great. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, and I'll just flip it through it and it's just all these, you know, cause I was a rocker then too, you know, and sure. all these rockers are in there and I'm just like Paul Gilbert and all this stuff. And I was 12 years old and I said, that's where I'm going at 12 years old. I was just hell bent that that's all I'm ever going to, I'm going to Hollywood. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I just held on to that brochure for years and would always kind of, you know, rummage through it. And I finally, uh, you know, come my, my junior year or something, I started reaching out and talked to Del Titus. Yep. He was the first communication I had there, you know, and sure. he uh, kind of ran me through it. And then I talked to Masta because I was in the degree program. So That's those right. were the first two guys I talked to. Yep. And uh, I was like, we set up a tour, you know, at my senior year of high school and we flew out there. Of course it was during break. So there was nothing going oh. on at the school. And I was yep. so bummed out, you know, cause I wanted to see my, my parents to see like all these other people that think like this and you know i'm not yeah. the only crazy person in the world <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know right. but uh it was so dead there and like you know it was hollywood in the 90s so there was just it was really dumpy yep. you know and it was yep. just like you know we're stepping over homeless people and it's sad and you know the there's st piles of, you know it's bad <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> so, yeah. and yeah. my mom's like you're, you're crazy like no you can't live here like this is insane i was like I loved every second of it. Yeah. It just, yeah. I don't know what it was just being in that city. I knew that's where I wanted to be. Yeah. That's where I needed to be. So, you know, God willing, I made it happen, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And it um, worked out and yeah. Now, and you know, again, it's, it's, um, you know, for, for anybody like any young kid that's, that's coming through high school, that's looking at, at, wanting to pursue a career in music, whether it's teaching, performing, whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, and again, getting back to like growing up in a small town, you, you almost, you almost have to like set your sights on some of the bigger cities like LA or New York Absolutely. or even Chicago or Nashville or, you know, cause yeah. it's, you, you know, as well as I do, it's like, that's, it's, 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 part about the education but it's also part about the networking opportunities that you get when you go to a city like that big right? time you know absolutely yeah i mean that's really it really comes down to relationships yeah. you know obviously talents involved you know you gotta craft you know work your skill but it's uh yeah it comes down to who you know and keeping those relationships and you know and then doing a great job when you get there you know yeah and if those yeah. things keep happening, you're just going to keep expanding your network and good things, sure. you know, can happen for sure. Now, I remember when you, when you, when you did get to MI, dude, you, you were a smoking player already at that point. Like, well, thanks for no, that. I, I, no, I mean, seriously, like, like I know, and I, I don't think this was any, any secret to anybody, but like when you showed up and you were playing and, you know, seeing you in the live performance workshops and classes and stuff, like there were a lot of cats who were like, man, well, you know, he's, you, you already had your stuff together at an 18, at 18 years old, 19 years old. What, what did you do up to that point? Did you study with people? Did you outside? Obviously you, you were in the woodshed every day. You could tell, but for uh, sure, you know, well, it also, yeah, I'll just give from the beginning, you know, um, if early on, like second grade, my brother had a drum kit. He was like, play the drums. You know, my brother's 10 years older than me. So yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't last long or go well because you know you can't practice without somebody screaming at you saying "shut up." You know, right. it's too loud. So right. that kind of ended abruptly. And um, when I was 11 years old, my brother was like, "Why don't you play bass?" You know, it's like if sometimes okay. my bass player can't make it, whatever, you can 
play bass. And I was like, okay, cool. What's that do? Yep. And I had no yep. idea, you know, and he did the coolest thing he could have possibly done. We were in his truck on the way to a, one of his band rehearsals and I was, yeah, probably yeah, about 11 years old. And uh, he turned the bass down on the stereo on the truck and it just sounded real tenty high. It was nothing but high end and mid range, yep. you know, which doesn't sound great. And then he brought in the bass kind of slowly and it just filled up the whole truck. And I was like, wow, that's significant. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. just like, bing, that was the light bulb for me. You know, I was okay. like, wow, that, if that's what the bass does, that's what I want to do. All right. You on. know what I mean? Just kind of like support and it's still rhythmic and, you know, because I, I still like the idea of being a drummer, you yep. know, but, um, yep. and, and then I remember in like sixth grade, we had to like pick our electives for middle school and I saw orchestra was one. Okay. And because uh, I didn't have any real idea what I would do in like the concert band, you know, I didn't play percussion anymore and yeah. I, uh, I didn't play a horn or anything. So I was, I just showed up to work. I signed up for orchestra and I showed up the first day and they're like, so what do you want to play? I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe the cello, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so you know something like, with four I, strings <laughs> something with four strings because i was already playing bass you know yeah um but i hadn't taken uh, the only i took lessons for bass but the only thing i did was learn the first uh i shouldn't tell anybody this i, I learned poison's first album from front to back hey man <laughs> So that look, look what the cat dragged in is all my musical foundation on bass. <laughs> so thank you, Poison. <laughs> yeah, right. Who was it? Bob, Bobby Doll, I think, is the bass player that, that yeah, man. played Absolutely. on the album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that kind of got me going with the cello, you know. Um, okay. And then when I was twelve, my brother tells me, "Hey, I got a gig," you know. So. I actually played bass for his band after okay. playing for a year. And I learned a bunch of, you know, Motley Crue and ACDC, yeah. and, you know, hair metal, all the, all the stuff back in that day, you know? Yeah. And it was a, a gig in the gazebo in a little town called Hope, Indiana. <laughs> and it's just like, that was it. There was two little girls on the side of the stage when we got done. They're like, you're cute. I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, like, like I've made line, it like the line from Rudolph she said I'm cute <laughs> exactly man it was exactly that moment so I'm like that's it this is all I'm ever doing and oh so and then so sorry I kind of jumped around there but um it's going right. back to orchestra um I'm a little scatterbrained sorry uh going back to the orchestra thing I I they're like well who wants to play viola and I was just like well I almost grabbed it and I was like no nah, well, I was cello sounds cooler it's lower yeah so yep. i went with that so that's okay. how i learned to read music was on cello okay that's because it's bass clef you know and yep. most yep. of the time anyway i was going to say bass so, clef or movable clef at that point was it bass yeah bass clef? which makes me crazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just putting it out there there should only be bass and treble clef that's what i'm going away yeah right right i agree <laughs> i agree i don't care about all that middle stuff it's just <sighs> no, it's unnecessary <laughs> Unreal. Man, it, is, it really is. So that was like, I mean, literally, dude, that that is that's the bass player joke. You learned a root and a fifth, and next thing you know, you're out gigging with your brother. You know, yeah, man. I, like, yeah, literally. So it, it was so much fun learning those songs and you know, like having a purpose. You know, and yeah. like at one point I, I I had I played with a pick then, of course, you know, yep. and I dropped yep. my pick and I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so right. i just made my finger like a pick and i just beat yeah. the holy crap out of my finger you know I just because i had no idea how to play with my fingers yet you know yeah yeah but that's i mean yeah that dude that like all of us you know you learn you you learn off of albums and then you go take what you learned off the album you go play with your old with your whether it's your older brother or you know what I mean? Like we yeah. that that's that's the story. It's like how do you get better as a musician? You start playing with people just a little bit better and a little bit older than you, and then you move oh, up yeah. to their level, and then you keep on. That's it. And then you get to my age where it's just like nobody's older than you, and you just you kind of stuck. <laughs> well, you're the guru. <laughs> I'm the yeah. No, I'm by far a guru. You're the guy, man. Come on now. <laughs> Maybe the goober, but not the guru. I was always afraid of your odd meter class. I'm like, I'm staying out of there. I suck at math. <laughs> <laughs> It was nothing personal. I was just like, I don't do math. <laughs> <laughs> math. I just you all know, that 
you know, it, it's funny. So the, the whole story behind that was when, when Jim Lacefield was teaching it, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, J Jim had, had passed away in the middle of the school year, but when he was teaching it, I, I was the same way, but he used to laugh at me. He was like, wait a second, you're Greek, dude. You should know this stuff. Like not even have to count it. <laughs> and that's kind of how right. I fell into doing that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Man, yeah. I never got to meet him. I, I heard nothing but amazing things about Jim Lacefield. Yeah, he, you know, it's funny. He was, um, I still, even on the other side of my studio here, I still have a, his picture hanging on my like wall of fame sort of thing. But yeah, Jim, Jim was the type of guy that I remember uh, like walking into Friday Fusion class in, in P1 in the big auditorium for those, those of you that don't know MI, but it was the big auditorium and um, and he would always like he would see me walk into the back of the hall and he'd get on the mic. Monoxless, I see you back there. Get up here. And, <laughs> and at the time, I was the same thing. I was a rock player. I wasn't a fusion or a jazz guy, but he instilled in a lot of plays, not just myself. Like he called us what he referred to us as blue collar players, guys that <laughs> learned off of albums, played rock show, you know, that like that sort of player. And yeah. he would he would get his claws into us and 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 get us playing fusion. And then next thing, all right, well, I did the fusion thing. Now I'm gonna try so I'm gonna try big band on Tuesdays. Ah, oh, big yeah. And, and you know, he just kind of instilled in everybody. And and that's kind of what 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 teaching does is like, you know, you instill mm -hmm. into your students that you can do this, even though you're not the best at it, you shall you you can still do it, sort of thing. You know, Most definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge lesson. That's so good. Really is. Really Absolutely. is. Yep, definitely. So man. what? So now you stayed in L.A. for a while. You ended up teaching at MI, but you also yeah. did you also did a lot. What, what were some of the gigs that you were doing in, in Los Angeles at the time? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I never got an audition <laughs> that I went for. OK, <laughs> like, literally one gig, I, it was this pop artist and, you know, the simplest music on earth. And I walk in and I recognize the whole band, you know, because they, they knew me from another artist that I was playing with at the yeah. time. And they're like, hey, man, so good to see you. And then they all stood up and they're all like a good foot taller than me. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> OK, well, that could just be a thing, you know. Yeah. So then we play and the artist comes up and yeah, she's tall, too. OK, I'm probably not going to get this i'm like one of these things is not like the other <laughs> you know what i mean so and then the nail in the coffin that i just absolutely knew it wasn't going to work out obviously i played the part because like i said sure just be like hey play this part and you can learn it you know yeah, so yeah, yeah yeah they go go to go to the camera and say your name and instrument and how tall you are <laughs> oh you know it's she, she she just didn't want anybody short to make her look even taller than she was you yep. So yeah. I literally didn't get the gig because of my height. And I'm like five yeah. ten. I'm not terribly short. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I'm average. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a that was something. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean and oops, I'll throw one more audition story in there too. But um my whole class basically auditioned for Steve I at one point, like all That's the bass right. players. That's right. And we went there, Greg Hanna was there, you know, yep. like all of these yep. cats, man. And uh, I think I actually even went with him to, to do it, you know. And it was just a jam. You just jam with Steve I and um, um, Mike Mangini was on drums. Okay. It was just insane. I think he's Dream Theater's drummer now. So. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, they're like, okay. So Steve starts playing. You jump on his riff. You start jamming. So, like, that's one thing I was always comfortable with, which is jamming with people. You know, I was like, never afraid, like, just. Yeah, let's jam. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was totally, I think I was 20 or 21 at the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, Steve's like, okay, listen. So I'm like, okay, check it out. Check it out. Because, man, my brother was such a huge, so I'm obviously freaking out that I'm jamming with Steve I right now. Right. You know? Holy cow. You know, so he starts playing this odd meter thing in seven, you know, and I jump right on it. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, that's easy math. Okay, cool. It's easy. <laughs> you didn't need my class for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get past seven, though, it's over. Like, wow. <laughs> So the funny thing was we had to stop because the drummer didn't catch. He, you know, Mike's an insane drummer. He just didn't right. hear the change. And he yep. didn't know Steve was going to make the change. So we, we started over and jumped on the So anyway, we get done. And I had to take a solo in front of him. And he was just like, go. And I was like, ah. <laughs> so I just like went for whatever I could. And uh, 
you know, and we get done. And he's like, put a gold star next to this guy's name. I was like, okay. Wow. Okay. Well, weird. Yeah. And I, everybody was getting that phone call like a week later, like, thanks for coming. But, you know, yeah. And uh, everybody, everybody. And then finally, I got that phone call. Thanks for coming. But, you know, we got to put the part cover. I was like, okay, whatever. Okay. So I see Mike Mangini at MI two days later. And he's yeah. coming out. I think he was doing a clinic or something. And he comes out. He's like, man. You did so good. We had you picked. I'm like, what? Don't tell me that. I'm like, tell me I was terrible. Right, right. <laughs> Don't tell right. me that. I petitioned. But the thing is, the bass player, I guess he had something come up. So he told Steve that, hey, I'm probably going to miss these dates. But then it canceled and he was okay to do the tour. Oh. So they just kept the guy that's already been playing with him. And it's, and the, he's such a nice guy that I couldn't be mad at him. Right. <laughs> Right. You know, it's like, Who? it's, you know, Phil Bino is the bass player. Oh, and yeah. Okay. Potentially one of the sweetest human beings I've ever yes. met. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm like, yeah. And he's a killer player. So I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's like, yeah. if he's your guy and he could do the gig, you obviously want him to do it. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, it's just like, dang it, that close. <laughs> so, so you you basically had the gig, but Phil decided to come back and he was able to fill the I dates. think that's how it went down. That's, yeah. that's what yeah. I from back then i think that's i think that's how it went down so yeah that's so funny man now was were was were was everybody else in the room watching you no. like it, Luckily, it was one it was person at a time one person at a time even okay. though it was like a cattle call thing you know yeah yeah so yeah it was but it was fun man just to say i got to jam with steve Vai. That's, you know it's just like it was you epic know, you know yeah yeah and you know it's so funny because fun. i know um you know, I've done, I did my fair share of, of cattle call auditions as well for share. And, and oh, wow. The, the last, the last one was, was when Ozzy was cattle calling everybody at SIR. And, oh, we, and you know, and SIR is right around the corner from MI for anybody that didn't know that. And I walked down there and the line was like around the, I just walked down with my base, walked, saw the line, went, yeah, forget this. And <laughs> at that point, I was so jaded on LA. It's like I'm go I'm taking my base and going home. <laughs> I'm going in and out first. But... <laughs> yeah, I'm going in and out first. <laughs> but, but that's but like you say, that you know, opportunities like that aren't necessarily going to happen in Indiana or Southern New Hampshire that's right. or you know areas like that. I remember Stanley Clark did something similar too when he was putting together a band. He went yeah, to MI. I for him too. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. He was looking for for a bass player. I remember. I think Aldi yep. and Greg and a bunch of people like Travis Bishop Carlton. Carlton. Yeah, that's right, Travis. Yep, yep. Which yep. I got to call. Tra I got to get Travis. We got to get Travis on one of these episodes here pretty soon. So yeah, I'm going to reach out to him pretty soon here. But um, um, so man, it's you know so so then when did you actually move? To Nashville when what and, and what was what was the deciding factor was it a gig or you just said you know what I'm going yeah. to Nashville for sure yeah I mean I yeah I spent uh 16 years in LA total oh and, wow uh, okay yeah so by the last two years I was subbing out a lot at MI yep. which was kind of becoming a drag for the students and I noticed that so I'm yep. just like you know what if I'm gonna be doing all I just need to like go yeah you know um yeah. Cause I was just touring with random artists at the time. And then I got involved with this country band called Miss Willie Brown. It was two led by two female sing, lead singers and then the band. And, uh, I kind of, I became the music director for that band. Okay. And, um, they started getting busy. They got a record deal. We started doing tours out of Nashville, little runs here and there. Yeah. So I kept flying back to Nashville, flying back to Nashville. And then we, uh, we got an opening slot on the Dirks Bentley tour. Okay. And that was like basically out for three months because I, I we'd come back to Nashville because Nashville touring is a little different than, you know, like a pop artist. A pop artist will go out for months at a time right. sometimes, whereas country world, it's generally like you leave on either a Wednesday or a Thursday night, a, you know, get on the bus in some grocery store parking lot and <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> and you head out, you go to wherever you're playing that weekend in a, a regional area. Yep. And then you're back like Sunday morning, you know? Yep. So yep. It's, it's funny. It's like driving somewhere Sunday morning. You see all the buses coming back to town. 
you know so that's basically <laughs> how country tour works you know it's like you're yeah. out and you might do three or four gigs that weekend you know so yeah just depends yep. obviously on the schedule so and then you're off monday tuesday wednesday maybe and then you do the same thing again so yeah yep. so you're kind of like home half the week gone half the week yeah so, yeah but um w- w- with that schedule though i wasn't flying back to la either you know i was just like i was just staying just staying actually. Sure. So sure. I was like, well, this is kind of starting to make sense. And, you know, I, I was starting to see more work opportunities open up. And um, a funny thing, too, another I, I, in Los Angeles, I met a producer named Dave Cobb, who okay. I, I didn't realize at the time I'm still working with. <laughs> it's like right? my main main producer that I work with, which has been amazing. And uh, we cut a record for Jamie Johnson in Los Angeles. OK. And um, he, uh, he just a <laughs> He's devastatingly good, man. Like this guy just he could sing the phone book to you and you're like, yes, that's the best thing I've ever heard. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I just think it's funny that you moved to you moved to Nashville and then you go back to L.A. to cut a record. <laughs> well, I, it was actually right before I, I moved. Oh, OK. So, OK. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> cool. and then. Uh, yeah. So and then a couple guys from that session got to get got the gig with Jamie. You know, I, I didn't want it because I wasn't really a country guy. You know, truth yeah. be told, on the way to that session, I was listening to country radio going, how's that go? <laughs> it's right? just awful. You right. know, but at the end of the day, once I got there, I was just like, you know what, man, this is just music. You, you yeah. play what's right for the music and it's going to work. You know, yeah. and that's what we did. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was killer. We, we it was over two two albums that they split it up on because he had right. just cut a record with Nashville guys two weeks before that did like 12 songs with them. And oh. then he's just like. I just want to go to Nashville and see what's going on. So uh, this producer I work with, Dave, he he worked a lot with Shooter Jennings, and that's how he met Jamie Johnson. So oh, okay, you know, all right, just that one thread put it all together, and you know that started happening. So yeah, yeah, and uh, and then the Lonesome Song did great. It it went gold, maybe platinum now. So, but uh, yeah, and then the guitar song was another one that it went out on. So okay, like two records, and yeah, it's just really cool, man. You know. And uh, yeah, I'm actually still buddies with Jamie. We talk every once in a while. And... Awesome. And that kind of, and that basically kind of bloomed into what what is what I would assume is most of your discography at this point. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's almost a lot of it is Dave's, yeah. you know, productions. So yeah. you know, there's ex- there's a few exceptions like some with Kebmo and you know things sure. like that. And, sure. But uh, How... yeah, I mean. I'll, yeah, go no, no, no. Go, I, I was going to say how, you know, and, and I, I know the answer to this, but yeah. I think I know the answer to this. Um, but how much like the, the, the difference between living in LA and working in LA, living in Nashville and working in Nashville, how much of, of, of that, especially living in Nashville is, is relationship focused versus, you know, like I, I, I remember this story, um, Mike Chapman, God rest his soul, used to used mm-hmm. to give us tours of Nashville during NAM. And, oh, wow. um, you know, he'd drive us down down Studio Row and all. And and, and we'd always ask Mike um, or I remember asking Mike, I said, Mike, I said, you know, this was back. I'm going to say probably mid 90s. I think I was still mm-hmm. living in L.A. Anyways, um, you know, his his claim to success was recording all those Garth Brooks albums. It was basically his wife was good friends with the producer that produced all those Garth Brooks albums. They became good friends, you know, for like family friends. And, and he kind of joked, he goes, you know, he says, you know, he says, honestly, the, 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 the amount of your work here in Nashville is relevant to the size of your bass boat. And, and he was joking <laughs> when he said that, but it was like, it, it, you know, yeah. it was like he was like, it's really based on who your fishing buddies are, who your hunting buddies are, you know, who who oh, your for buddies sure. are. So well, it, it never fails, and this is the honest truth. Like I'm I really I don't go out a lot, mm-hmm. you know, to, to hang like I should really, you yeah. know. But uh every time I do, every time I go to a, a club that I frequent, you know, that I play at, you know, where it's kind of a musician hang, I'll run into somebody, we'll talk, and then something will come from that. Right. You know, whether it's a, a gig or a session or something, you know, yeah. and I'm just like, well, duh, this is obviously what you do. <laughs> you yeah. know, keep connections, because the thing is, I mean, there's just there's just so many people 
and you just kind of lose track of who's doing what, you know, like, yeah, a lot of times yeah. I'll run into somebody and they're like, man, you're so busy. I was like, really? I'm not. That's one thing I hate about social media. It just, it, the perception of like, man, yeah. you're working 24 seven every day and it's just not true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't call you because we figure you're too busy. <laughs> yeah that shit like that just kills me man <laughs> it's like no i'm never too busy to answer a telephone please call me <laughs> exactly at least let me say no if right. i am busy you know right. like but a lot of times man if i'm i'm just sitting around waiting you know like sometimes yeah. like yeah you know or trying to put it out there or whatever you know yep. i even had a guy give me some crap because i did put it on facebook one time i was like hey february is open and you know if you need base for whatever blah right. blah, blah this dude he's like what are you doing man you sound desperate i'm like how's anybody supposed to know if i don't put yeah. it out there yeah you know what i mean we're our own sales people like we don't i don't have an advertising agency yeah, working right. for me you know <laughs> so it's like i wish i have did a billboard? <laughs> you have a billboard on the side of the 40 <laughs> brian allen I looked, at, I looked into that you had to get like five signs at minimum you know so i'm like ah that's over my budget <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that'd be hilarious. Like, here's your bass play. <laughs> right, right. Oh man, that would be that would be too fun. They'd run me out of this town so quick. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Oh, you know, man. But yeah, yeah. Who, who else was telling me like uh, what first one of the first times I went to Nashville, I had uh I had a stack of business cards, you know, with my name and email address, and I didn't even think I had email back then, but it was just like my name and phone number and what I did. I handed yep. it to and they're like, dude, we don't we don't hand out business cards here. It's like you write your name down on a cocktail napkin and be thankful that, you know, it, it doesn't go through the wash sort of thing. It's like, yeah, you don't hand out business cards here. <laughs> That's funny. And nowadays it's like, you know, I guess give me your phone number. You know, it's like you just hand each other's phones to, you know, pass yeah, phones yeah. and you put your info in. It's like I still kind of like the idea of a business card, though, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, none it's of this. Easy. It's just like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, let me let me tap your phone. Here, let, Seriously, tap, like you know. <laughs> anyway. And then if I don't write down like a reference of who this person is, like where I met them or something, then yeah. I have like no idea who that person is. Yeah, you know, and I'm just like, yep. oh crap. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, that's why I like business cards. It's like you know, yeah. LA used to crack me up with business cards. D dudes used to put like their name, phone number, and then they, on the back sometimes they'd put an entire biography of who they played oh, with. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> yep. I, <laughs> or I used to be who, who, who they think they played with. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, dude, dude, you, you don't want to know who I played with. Believe me, you won't hire yeah. me just based on that. Either, either that or you're going to think I work really cheap. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. You know, I mean, but and I got to say, man, that's a big difference in uh, Nashville and Los Angeles. Like LA, man, I was working to pay the bills. Yeah. You know, yeah. just like, it just seemed like it was like nonstop, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's not a cheap place to live. You're driving everywhere. You're spending tons on gas and, yeah, you know, yeah. out here, it's just like, it's, it's becoming a little more expensive because of the influx of, of everybody coming here. But, uh, right. you know, when I first moved here, I moved here in 2011. And, okay. um, uh, so it, I, it was almost, I would consider it like a ghost town to compared to what it is now. Right. You know, you, right. You could be out at 10 o'clock at night. And there's no cars on the road. I was like, what am I? Where am I? You know, when I first moved here, yeah. I was like, this is so weird. Yeah. You know, yep. but uh, boy, have that changed. It's just, yeah. yeah traffic well, 11 is here. Years. You know, 11, you know, 11 years, years, man. 11 years. Do you ever do, um, do you, do you ever do the Broadway thing? Do you play down on Broadway at all? Do you kind of try and stay away from, you know, I, I looked into it when I first got here, you know, yeah. I got a set list from a friend who I'd played with before I played like some of her original music. Cause in LA, man, honestly, I never really did a lot of cover gigs there either. There, it was there wasn't any. Just, and that, yeah, there wasn't yeah. really any. And I was just working with singer songwriters all the time. Yep. And, yep. uh, and between that and teaching, I was able to sustain my life somehow. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, those guys, man, the guys that play down there like almost every day, they're like hip to like 300 songs. Yeah. You know, and like I got a set list from a friend and it was like, there was like two Tom Petty songs in a row, which I love Tom Petty. And then there's like yep. a Garth Brooks song and then there's this and that. And it just stylistically, it just wasn't what I was attuned to. And I was just like, I just, I can't, you know, I just yeah. couldn't get my head into the game enough to like sit down and memorize all these tunes. Cause yeah. 
you know, down there, nobody really reads much, you know, like every yep. once in a while you see guys with charts, but it's rare, you know, yep. and they're all killer, you know, people down there are killing it, you know? Yep. So I'm just yep. like, I just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I, I'm either too lazy or too old to be able to memorize all these songs, you know, like, cause or it's, too, it's daunting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, tell me about it. Or too wise <laughs> to, yeah. to get into that. That's not really better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, because it's, so, I mean, it, God bless those guys that can do it. Cause I mean, nowadays too, with the influx of tourism here, I mean, they're doing, some cats are really raking it in down there. Yeah. You know, yep. plus my back and a four hour gig aren't yep. friends. Yeah. You know, yep. and that's kind of a big part of it too. Just the physicality of it. It's just like, oof. Yeah. And you know, it's not just country might, music either. You got to know the whole gamut, you know, yeah. every style. So, Oh yeah, it's nuts. You know, they're like, yeah, yeah we'll do some uh, modern country with some classic rock. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there is, there is a certain book, like I, I know because you know I see it on the Nashville Bass Hang. You know, there is yeah. there is a book that circulates. Like, hey man, yeah. I'm you know I'm new to I'm new to Broadway. Who's got the book? And it's like, but it is. It, it's it's a book of about three or 400 songs. It's not like these are the 20 songs you have to know. It is like, no, <laughs> no. these are the 300 <laughs> songs you have to know. That's and, right. Uh, and just be able to pull them out at any point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Man, I, I remember um, when, uh, when Scruggs was, was still alive, Sean Scruggs. Um, yeah, man. I went in to go visit him. He was playing, I think it was hockey talk central third floor at hockey talk central or one of the rooms. I went to go visit mm -hmm. him. And he, and he calls me up on stage. He goes, you want to, you want to sit in? I was like, yeah, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll sit in. So yeah. I go up, grab his bass and he disappears gone for an hour. Oh no. Like ju just completely <laughs> bolts. And of course, you know, the, the drummer and the guitar player, you know, they're kind of nursing me along. Do you know this song? Yeah, I know that song. And I, I probably knew maybe 50% of the tunes that they were calling, but after yeah. an hour, he comes back laughing. I was like, because they don't take, that's the other thing. They don't, they don't take breaks. They don't take breaks. No, No, it's like, you're on for four hours, man. So when he came yeah. back, I was like, dude, where the heck did you go? He was, he was like, oh, I was downstairs shooting a shit with some buddies. We did a couple of drinks down there. I was like, and you just left me hanging up here for an hour. Thanks, dude. <laughs> but, but to him, like he was saying, he says, man, we don't get breaks. It, I thought I was gone for like 10 minutes. I was like, no, you yeah. you were going for all of an hour, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and you knew it. <laughs> and you knew it. <laughs> exactly. He just, he completely suckered me in on that one. God love him. So, oh, man. Yeah, I miss anyways. that dude. He was a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, tell me, yeah. tell me something about, you've, you've got a whole slew of bases back there that we got to, we got to talk about, too. I know Dom, if right. Dom was on this, Dom would be like chomping at the bit because I know, <laughs> you know, obviously... You're you're a big MTD fan. You're you're one of their endorsers. Yeah. Um, every, this is every, all, this whole rack is MTDs. It's like every time I I see a post from you, from it's like, dude, I got a new MTD. I'm like, nice, man. I just <laughs> well, I I I played one at a name show, summer name show, and fell in love. Yep. And it was this guy right here. It's a five string Saratoga P, uh, jazz bass. Sorry. Yep. And yep. Uh, just normal scale, you know. Yeah. And it's kind of his answer to like, you know, more of like a traditional sounding bass instead yep. of like the real high fi high end, you know, and this with the rosewood was just, and the neck on this thing is just butter, yeah. super thin, you know, real nice diameter, or whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, just super playable. And I've, you know, as soon as I got this bass, I think I went on the road with Robin with it, you know? Oh yeah. And, yeah. Um, just, you know, Took it to the studio and it sounded great, you know. Yeah. And uh, I always wanted a 535 because, you know, that's kind of their their signature. So this yep. is the first 535 I had made, which is okay. a maple burl top yep. and an alder body with a toasted neck, maple neck and yep. bird's eye fingerboard. Yeah. And, then, you know, even when this was on the on with Michael in his shop, he uh, sent me a text and said, this is a really good sounding bass. So for, for the master. Oh, Michael, to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, he, he's, he's the guy, man. I mean, I've always wanted one, you know, and I just wasn't ready for it yet, you know, but now the time is right. So yeah, I'm just trying to make it happen as much as possible. That's so cool. And That's then uh, so cool. I had a, had a Saratoga built 
and it's this one. And I just love the look of the 535 so much that I, I use the exact same wood combination. Okay. Yep. And this yep. is a PJ. And man, for the I I've used this on so many sessions here in town for like the modern country. This actually I put flats on this base. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh. it's just a monster. <laughs> it's so good. I love the sound of this bass so much. It's almost, it's a dual nine volt too. So it's really got a ton of output. Okay. And I usually sl slam my bass in the mids. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. and then, uh, but yeah, a lot of times I'll just use the P bass. Okay. Setting, and it just, oh my gosh. And you know, it's so good. I was going to say, you don't catch any shit from the engineers for not bringing an FS. We, it, they still call it an FSO. You know, bringing yeah. an FSO into the session, fender shaped Man. object. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more like guitar players for some reason in this town. Because, okay, you know, well, yeah. I got my telly, you better have your P bass, man. You know, yeah, so yeah. Here's yeah. my answer. And then this is another five string Saratoga. Okay. That um, yeah. he actually had me demo during the COVID, you know. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I played about three notes on it. And my wife was upstairs and she was like, that sounds really good. And I was like, it does, doesn't it? I, like, I should probably, <laughs> probably buy this one too, huh? She was like, yeah, you should. So I was yeah. like, I, first of all, I love her forever for saying that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to anyway, but that really, that's, that sealed it. That sealed but, it. Uh, so, so this is like my twin to the black one I just showed. Okay. And I keep round wounds on it. So, okay. So I got both options, you know? Yep. Yep. What and do you use? For, what do you those, use for flats on that other on the other Saratoga? If you don't mind me asking, everything's Diodario. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I um, I use the Chromes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's what the. There we are. Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Now, what yeah, what man. what do you like? I know sessions are different. Obviously, you know some sessions you bring one bass to, other sessions you 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 bring a number of bases. What? Yep. And knowing, obviously, you have to know what you're going into for the session. You know, there's there's that's sometimes nice to know. Yeah, yeah. you don't always get that luxury. <laughs> okay. All right. So so yeah. like, let's say you're going into a session blind, and it's like you have no idea what you're walking into. What do you bring? Yes. Five bases? Do you bring ten bases? Do yeah. You bring, Okay. I mean, I've brought five bases for a two song demo thing before, you know, like, yeah, just yeah. not having a clue. You know, I'll always bring those two, the five strings with the PJ. Yep. One with flats, one with rounds. I'll always bring those. Okay. Um, I have, well, funny enough, this, this is my newest MTD. It's a fretless four string that's passive and yep. it's got Lindy Fraylin pickups in it with the extra 10% wrapping the so yep. the, the wine yeah so a little hotter this thing sounds insane like i've <laughs> i've tracked with it a couple times maybe three three or four times now and it's just beautiful wow you know so and you get rounds really, on that or flats always rounds on a fretless okay. for me yeah. it, michael was kind of <laughs> he I, I felt him squirm a little bit when i said hey, i'm putting rounds on this like <laughs> <sighs> all right i'll put an extra epoxy in the fingerboard so it doesn't fall apart <laughs> in, 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 sorry, in, his, in his deep michael tobias voice i can i, I could hear i can hear him now all right I'll, 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 yeah he, he got a little gruff on me but i love that man dearly <laughs> that's awesome that's so awesome. this is uh before i was an mtd guy but even to this day, and there's another great credit towards Michael, and I'll, I'll stop here. But, you know, he when we decided to start working together, he goes, look, you're a session guy. I know you're not going to just play my bases. You know, any chance that you can talk about them or put them out there, grateful. And I'm just like, man, <laughs> it's like I, you know, every chance I do get, I do play those things or talk yeah. about them or, you know. Sure. Sure. And, um, but man, I just, yeah, he just, he's the, he's as cool as it gets, you yep. know? So, yep. I but, will attest to that. um, I, uh, yeah. So just to be in that part of that family, man, it's just so, so such an amazing thing. Yep. But, um, but yeah. And so with that being said, here's the P base that I do probably most of my Dave stuff with Dave Cobb. Okay. This okay. is a, this is a 79 P base yep. and it has Seymour Duncan pickups in it that are okay. one of a kind. The guy I bought it off of in LA had put these in and he had them just 
total custom made. I think they're around, they're, they're wrapped harder okay. because they're, the, I don't know. I can't find a base that sounds like this thing, yeah. you know, yeah. and I can't beat it. So I put flats on it because of the maple board yep. kind of like tamed it down a little bit, but it makes it pokey. You know, it's like, yep. it's real punchy, especially if you palm meet it or something. Yep. And this is actually a jazz neck. It's just labeled precision. Really? Yeah, buddy. How does that so happen? I, I don't know, but I just want to give that person a hug because I, <laughs> I'm all palm, you know. I don't have long fingers, so like smaller the neck, the better for me. Yep. Okay. Wow. So yeah, I couldn't really do the baseball bat p base thing, and yeah, and it, you know at MI too, everybody, all the, <laughs> all you guys were like, you got to get a p base with flats, and I'm like, ah, come <laughs> on, you know, just that was a six string guy. I had a six string That's graphite right. neck Zon. Yep. You know that I still have. I have two of those you things. Still have that. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm just like, man, because when I showed up at MI in 95, everybody had a boutique base. Yes. Everybody. Like yep. every like I remember some dude from Brazil had a base with didn't even have dots on it. It was all just like all these exotic woods and it was fretless. And I was like, that guy's crazy. Yeah. Playing fretless all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. But like half the class had six strings. You know, yes. like there was Zons and Tobias and Modulus and all this stuff. And it was like Ken Smith's and yep. you know, oh, yeah, like, Ken Smith's because that was that was the thing back then. Yep. Like yep. the guy that had the fender was like the weird kid. That's yeah. right. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. You know, yeah, I was like, oh, he's only got four strings. What's he going to do yeah. with that? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like yeah. it's just like 18 and so stupid about that kind of thing, because I I got a six dream because I, I was obsessed with dream theater in high school. Okay. You know? So yep. I was like, well, I, I can't play this stuff if I don't have a six dream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I knew about Zon basses because of Michael Mannering. I had got, I'd fallen into his record somehow in a music store. And I was like, Oh, bass player on the cover. Let me check this out. And yep. you know, I think yep. the album was called Thonk or something like that. You know? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, wow. so that that wow. was I was like, oh wow, that's crazy sounding. So I was, I'll check out his on, you know. And, yep. But uh, yeah, pretty wild. But then, boy, did things change. You know, it's like yeah. the boutique bases went away, and then everything became Fender. And eBay was like, hey, you should charge this oh, much yeah. for your. Yeah. Man, the base that got away from me was a 1962. I went with Greg Hanna. He could attest to this. This seafoam green, all original, concentric knob, 62 jazz bass. Okay. To this day, probably the best sounding jazz bass I ever played. And probably still the best feeling. I mean, the neck just was like, it just felt like nothing. Yeah. And it was yeah. just so small. And, and it was like $2,000. Yeah, on, sun, on Sunset, you know, one of those shops that was there, you know, used yep. shops that used to be out there. And Hannah's like, you have to get this bass. I was like... I don't have any money, dude. Like two grand <laughs> seemed like a hundred thousand dollars back then. Yeah. Know? Yeah. It, well, and it was, you know? Yeah, man. So I was just wow. like, ah, oh, man, I'll just wait. I'll get one, you know? And then eBay happened. And now they're like, you know, that base now is, you know, that's a 20 plus thousand yeah. dollar base. Yeah. So I'm like, well, yeah. crap. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I never thought I'd own one of those, but anyway, yeah, this base gets a lot of work. Okay. Um, Seventy-nine. This is a, yeah, I know. Oops. Uh, <laughs> this is a 65P base that I got here in Nashville. Okay. And I keep round rounds on it. So kind of like I do with my MTDs, I like having a P base with flats, a P base with rounds. Yep. I got gotcha. you. And and I didn't like the way round sounded on this base either. I don't know okay. why. It just wasn't a good fit. So I mean flats, excuse me. Okay. Um, yep. But yeah, I put the I put the rounds on it. And it's got that it's it's yeah. It's, more pop sensibility rock thing for sure yep. you know so yep. that's the sound man but it's I've funny i'm real happy with that it's funny how certain strings oh you know gosh. like you, you know thing, man yeah like i mean i'm i'm a diadario guy i love i love the the, the pro steels and yep. i put them on every bass that they sound great on but there's a couple of bases of mine that you put them on they go yeah it's not the right string for that bass sort of yeah. thing you know it's just it's weird. a bizarre thing yeah yep. yeah absolutely no there's there's a lot of truth to that yeah um but uh this is a 1962 jazz bass and i found it man i got it the logo's all messed up because it wasn't put on exactly great but 
I, I've already ripped that off. But anyway, <laughs> this is an it's an all original sixty two except jazz. except for the paint. I had it because I was here's the deal. I walk into the store, I see it hanging up. It was it's some real dark red color at the time. Yeah, and I was like, what's the deal with this base? Why is it so cheap? Because it wasn't twenty thousand dollars. I can guarantee right. you that. Right. And the guy just said, everything's original. It's just got a bad finish on it. I was like, that, that's it? But so, it was an original it, finish. It was yeah. the original no, no, no. finish. It it, 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 I don't know what the original finish was. Oh, okay. It, it could have okay. been could have been a tobacco sunburst or something. I don't know. Okay. But um, okay. So I, I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, what else is wrong with it? They're like, well, it probably needs a fret job. You know? So I'm like, okay. So I had to buy it. <laughs> Because there's no way I could afford another. I, mean, I can't afford them otherwise. So I found it was less than half that price, quite a bit. So I had it refinished. Yep. And I put new frets on it. And this bass is ridiculous. It's just, okay. it's got that sound. Because I have a 71 Jazz that yeah. I, I love, but this one's just kind of, yeah. The, it's the shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I got that bass that I let go, you know, basically. So, yep. and, so and, back, yeah. So far back. Oh, man. man, but uh, man, yeah, and I got a couple. I got one of those um, Ace and Onyx basses from uh, Carrie Nordstrand, the cat. Oh, bass. yeah, yeah, yep, yep, man, that's a funky little bass, yeah. I uh, I, I just produced a record and put that bass on a couple tracks, and it's just big, fat tone, nice, and uh, nice, yeah, man, just killer. And I got one of those silver tone, I call it a dolphin bass because of the headstock, yep, it's, yep, uh, it's like a 60, nice. 60, 60, 67 or something like that. Speaking of producing, you're starting to get more into, uh, and we still haven't even talked about your discography yet, but that's, <laughs> I know I'm kind of <laughs> jumping around here, man, because um, it's all good. You're, you're, you're starting to get more on the other side of, as they say, on the other side of the glass, I guess, but you're more into yeah, the man. side of things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's kind of, it's, it's been an ongoing thing and I, I've always kept the door open for that, but I've just been knock on wood busy recording which is sure. awesome i love love being in the studio i love playing live too but the session world is just really like to to be able to play on a song and yeah. you know from its from its infancy to see it grow into an actual song and and then yeah. to hear yourself on the radio is just cool you know it's like yeah. i never get tired of that man i'm like you know like look i'm on the radio <laughs> it's, well, just, it's the coolest thing man like it just i love it so much you know i'm like I'm really like I'm humbled every time I go into the studio just because it's like every time it's different. It's always different. It's just, yeah. it's a new way to find, you know, that end game. So, yeah. But um, yeah. but yeah, man, like being a being the producer chair, I just produced a record last week and, uh, you know, it just it couldn't have gone better. You know, yeah. and, and, and it's kind of the same deal. It's just relationships because you, you, you work with so many people and in different settings and you start to learn who can do what and who's going to have yeah. the right, you know, this thing for this and, you know, personalities and how those go together. And yeah. and then you call yeah. the right people for a session and you just have nothing but fun. I mean, we had to track 11 songs in two days, so it was pretty oh, wow. intense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it was a, yeah. You know, but you know, we spend, you know, 10 minutes playing, and, you know, 50 minutes yeah. cracking jokes. So, <laughs> yeah. But you gotta, I mean, at some point, you know, through, through your career and, and your travels, you had to have earned the trust of people that you've worked with for somebody to say, huh, who am I going to have produce my next album? You know what? Brian Allen would be a great producer to do this. And then they call on you to do something like that. Is that kind of how it works? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> we I haven't figured out that part yet. I haven't quite figured this thing out, man. Like, I, I don't even know how I play bass most of the time like, i'm like how am i here like, what's going on you know like yeah. one session that blew me away that i worked with dave once again um was uh with barry gibb yep we did a we did a whole record with barry gibb and we spent a month in the studio and he had guest artists come in and the first guest artist was him and dolly parton i'm just like and i'm sitting 10 feet away from the two of these legends icons and, yeah Oh my God. I was just wow. like, what am I doing? Like, what is going on right now? Like, yeah. really? Like, what's happening? I couldn't, yeah. couldn't get my head around it, you know, because Dolly comes in the room and she just, just fills up, no matter how big that room is, she just fills it up with her personality, which is beautiful. She's sure. an amazing human being and just so gracious and just an amazing person. I mean, who else has a theme park? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Disney. Which I've been to. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> wow. And Dollywood's awesome. But, uh, you know, it's her. And then she's like cracking jokes to Barry. And she's she's like, I just can't do that. Ha, 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 ha thing you do and he's like beat red and just like oh my god what <laughs> he was probably a little starstruck on that one too then you um know? yeah we all were and then of course wow. they start singing and it's just magic and you know it's just unbelievable yeah. and the whole month was like that it just you know like keith urban he's got that upper mid-rangey kind of voice his blend with him was unbelievable you know uh, little big town came in and they just destroyed it you know gillian yep. welsh just one after another allison krauss was just she's her voice freaks me out. Yeah. It's so yeah. just pure and just amazing, just angelic, if you will, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So just that month alone, like I just kept having my mind blown. This is kind of funny. I was, I was playing, I was, I forget which song it was, but I was in it and I just went to the seventies in my head. Like I felt like we are in this time period, like this is happening. We get done. And I was like, Oh my God, God, that was an amazing effing song. Just blurted it out. And I was oh, like, you said it out loud. Because <laughs> I freaked out, man. Like, it just came out of me. Like, I was, I was totally, like, transported, and I came back. And I was like, holy crap, that was an amazing effing song. And then Barry's like, who said that? I was like, uh-oh. I was like, I did. <laughs> and he's just like, you can come back tomorrow. I was like, yeah. <laughs> So thank God he appreciated my enthusiasm. Right? <laughs> How could he not, though? I mean, come on. Oh, you know? gosh. Oh, man. But talk about another humble soul, man. He's just yeah, just a beautiful cat, man. Just yeah. so, you know, he was so gracious for everything. And just, you know, and just, I don't know. But, and we're just like, Barry, that's killing. It's amazing. You know, and I learned a lot studying those songs, too, because it's like, there's really not really a bridge in half of those songs. Okay. You know, which All is right. interesting. He's wow. like, yeah, man, you just get to it, you know, like, <laughs> so but you they're really smart ahead of time before you went in to do the session, the demos. Oddly enough. Yeah. That never happens. But for right. that one, because we're covering, you know, yep. previously recorded stuff. Yep. So yeah, we were able to check it out and I try to keep it as close to that and add my own sure. thing here and there. So, sure. and yeah. uh, man, we did a version of jive talking with uh, J Buchanan from the rival sons oh, nice. and Miranda Lambert. Nice. With Barry on the track, With of course. Barry. Wow. Oh, came out so good, man. I was just like, this is my jam. I was born in the wrong era. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I know it. I, you know, you, you, you look back, like you see all these documentaries about old Nashville and the session work that was going on back in the oh 50s. And the 60s. It's like, man, what, what was the town like then? Like what, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, and there's still cats, you know, there's, there's still cats that are out there that, that'll tell you what the town was like back then, too, you know? Yeah. But, um, is there anybody that that you haven't worked with yet? Because, uh, you know, obviously, you, I, I, I want to ask, ask you, I know we're running out of time, but I want to ask you about working yeah. with Robin Ford as well. But oh, is, yeah. is there anybody that you haven't worked with yet that is like at the yeah. top of your list right now that you're that you're kind of like i gotta work with this person well it's it's, it's a more of a dream gig because i don't see it happening but stevie wonder is okay obviously, you know i mean god yeah. grief i mean yeah. Uh, it, that's yeah that's my jam right there man okay so stevie wonder herbie hancock sure would be another artist that i would just absolutely love to work with you know I would have loved to work with Chick before he passed. Sure. You know, sure. just all those, all those legendary guys like that, you know? So he, this is going to kind of segue into the Robin thing, but I got to, and I've known you for a long time, but mm -hmm. I got to ask you this question. Living in Nashville, playing a lot of country sessions, doing a lot of that certain style of music. But then mm -hmm. at night you go out and you play with cats like Mike Valaris and you know doing these yeah. and and robin ford and yeah not I, well i mean don't get me wrong mike's mike's an amazing player but he's not robin ford Absolutely. obviously but but you know what i mean like you you're stepping into this realm of of musicianship that is the total opposite not saying it's it's not as qualified but it's the total opposite sure. of playing yeah. entry session you have to be yeah. 
as your mom said at the beginning of this interview, you've got to be kind of crazy, but you have to be fearless. <laughs> you, yeah, you know there's I mean? some of that and, element. Yeah, I, for I, sure. I, so how do you prepare for something like, like in the mindset, it's like, all right, I just did a country session this afternoon. And now I'm going to play tonight with Robin Ford. I got to yep. get my head out of this and I got to get it into this now. And you, yeah. you're, you're such an accomplished player, man. I'm, I, oh, I'm, so, man. I'm so jealous. <laughs> no, stop it. Are you no, kidding me? But no, seriously, dude, it's like, how do you, how do you get into that headset? What do you practice? What do you prepare man, to do? That? Well, I mean, it, it all goes back to high school for me, you know, because yeah. when I was in high school, just to make it short is I, I got a letter for summer band camp and I didn't know why. Cause I just wanted to play bass in the jazz band, mm -hmm. you know? So from early age, I, I knew like if I want to get my head around some deeper thought, deeper thinking into like the theory of music, yep. jazz would be a way to go, you know, as, as far as starting sure. to understand that. So I, I played bass in the jazz band. I marched the first year. I played bass on the sidelines. So I was playing all the tuba parts, okay. which is insane, but yeah, <laughs> moving on. In my sophomore year, I started playing, uh, quads in the drum line okay so i was learning to read all this crazy music because our yeah the guy that wrote our drum parts was out of his mind so we had all this crazy stuff to learn so that's what i did in math class usually <laughs> 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 so oh. that whole i can't count there's a reason for that <laughs> <laughs> but um you know and then by my senior year though like no kidding i was i was doing five out of seven classes during the day with band Okay. Because I, I literally, I did the, I'm not saying this is what you should do, but I did the bare minimum of everything else. Sure. You know, as far as like general education goes. And so even on my study hall, I would go to the band room yep. and either practice or, you know, so I was playing, you know, drums in like the second jazz band at one point. Okay. I was playing bass in the main jazz band. I was playing upright bass in the symphonic band. I was playing timpani in the concert band, marching quads, playing cello in the orchestra. Yep just going to crazy <laughs> you know it's like i mean my high school i went to columbus north high school in columbus indiana and man that music program was just absolutely stellar my band director bill stoltz was just encouraging to do everything he's like do it man you know it's like just work keep working on it you know yeah. so i considered a classical percussion for a minute because i like won a scholarship on timpani my senior year okay you know and i was like uh no i'm just <laughs> Back yeah. to bass. The thing is, I sucked on upright. You know, I couldn't play upright with a darn. You know, and I was it was real discouraging. I go to solo and ensemble, and I was just like, ur, 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 you know, just <laughs> bad. I, I, I went to the solo competition for a scholar, like a Pell Grant scholarship, whatever. Yeah. And uh, my my end pin fell as I'm in the middle of this thing, like it, you know, playing in this cool. really good sounding church, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah right so like it just got worse and you know i'm like i i got nothing like wow <laughs> it was like it was like something out of a movie but it was just it was it was totally happening but uh yeah wow. so that was a nightmare so i was a little discouraged with upright but then once i got to mi i started working with putter yep and yep. putter smith who was just such a great teacher because it was kind of like well does it sound good does it feel good do that yeah, you know, because yeah. I, I hold my bass a little different, you know, and I let it yeah. lean back on me a little more. But, but yeah, you know, and I'm I'm just I at 45, I'm I'm getting I feel like I'm getting a little more comfortable with the upper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just it took me 10 years to be okay to just feel like I could play it in public. You know, right? right. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's one of those instruments, man. But uh, I mean, and the thing what I really focused on at MI really was diversity and you know yeah. being able to play a bunch of different styles you know i was always in the you know three horn band i was doing the yep. big band when it was still around i was you know in a metal band that was doing great yep. at the time yep. you know funk yep. th that was the band <laughs> yeah and uh you know but i just i'd always try to figure out how do, can i bring one style into another one maybe as i'm working mm -hmm. with these people and, you know and integrate integrating that and and then later on I was playing in a funk band with Greg Adams from Tower of Power. Okay. I was in his band for like seven years called East Bay Soul. Yep. Yep. And uh, doing that. And then through that, I met some starting into the Latin community a little bit and, you know, started playing some salsa gigs, and, which I ended up doing here in Nashville as well. I did that for about a year okay. and then I went on tour and I came back and I lost my gig, but it happens. 
<laughs> that happens, you know. I mean, you know. <laughs> but you got to be fearless when you're doing that stuff, you know. Oh, like, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you got to be fearless, but you also got to educate yourself really of course. well, you know. Of course. And I think, uh, and I think one of the biggest things with that is just listening. You know, it's not even like I'm going to learn this bass part to this song. It's like, how are they approaching that? You know, because feel yeah. is so much. You know, links. The length of a note is a huge thing. Yeah. And that and that's very style specific as well, you know, and even like different parts of like country music or Latin music, you know, the low, note length, should I be muting it? Should I let it ring out? All that stuff matters, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. That's yeah. It's like I said, it's, it's, it, it and that's kind of one of the best things that get back to what I was saying earlier too. It's, going to school and networking with school it it, it opened us oh, up man. to so many different styles that you you can you can be a cool rock star and still play latin music or you yeah. know or, or sit in the big <laughs> band and you know guys like steve bailey and gary willis you you know they, they, they were the epitome of cool you know and man so, i i have to, i have to jump in there because i did big band with steve bailey once <laughs> and I'm, I'm playing and we open this chart it's like a four or five page chart and you know, Dave Posey counts us in and it's a burner, you know, it's like, okay. Yep. And I'm, I'm reading, that's the thing I could read really well when I got to MI because of okay. high school, because I did all that reading. Sure. So sure. man, I'm telling you, learn to read kids. Holy cow. Yeah. Cause when you get to college, that's what your curriculum is based in notation. So that I was just, I fooled a lot of people that I was better than I was because I could read, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wasn't that good. I was just like, I was lucky that I could just read anything. You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of crazy. Like, I wish I could read that good now, even like it was nuts, yeah. but uh, my technique sucked and I didn't know theory at all. You know, like I just, well, I had none of that. Good <laughs> <thing>. so, <laughs> it was like, it was one of those things, but so I'm in the big band with Steve Bailey. I'm playing and playing and playing and all of a sudden I'm like, that's not where we are. And Steve kind of looks over. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, we're talking, the band's playing. <laughs> I'm just like, he's like, you're lost. Aren't you? I was just like, yeah, that page is gone. He's like, Okay, well, that's the next page. So when you see that figure, that's where we are. That was our conversation. That so was I'm it. Just like walking, walking, yeah. walking, and then <laughs> there's that figure. Okay, cool. Now I know where. And man, that was one of the best lessons of my life. Because no matter Imagine. what, you don't stop playing. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knew. I had no idea where I was. That's right. You know, because that's I was right. reading with my ears. I knew what key we were in, so yep. I just kept walking in that key, just trying to make it work, and. Yep just waited for that figure and it's that now we're back <laughs> yeah and, right and steve's just like you did the right thing you know he's like you don't stop you kept it going that's the deal I'm yeah like, man yeah and yeah. that stuck with me man that like that, that was like a profound moment so oh, i was man. like yeah let's do that and it's that thing man like because if you start freaking out it's over it's like ah i stopped playing now everybody knows that i have no yeah. idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody starts looking so, at you and then they start getting nervous like oh, oh is this going to be a train wreck and then they start second really. guessing where they are in the chart and oh yeah, yeah man it just yeah yeah it all goes you know because i always said drums are here bass is here we're the foundation we're the glue yeah you know like if that's not solid the rest is just wobbling around up yeah. there and, you know yeah exactly yeah man but yeah that was good stuff <laughs> man wow well listen dude i, I we're going to have to have you come back on another episode so we can man, talk about I would about absolutely love to. I could I feel like I could talk to you all day, man. Like <laughs> well that like I said that's that's kind of that's kind of what these chats are all about, dude. It's like Yeah. You know, we see each other maybe once or twice a year at a trade show. And mm -hmm. and, and it's, you know, we're always constantly looking over our shoulder, you know, waiting for somebody else to like attack us. You know, so it's right. like this no, that, that's that's what these conversations are. It's just like we finally get a chance to catch up, um, pass along some great information. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody listening, you know, obviously they got great information. They, there you go. So these guys, they, yeah, they, <laughs> I was gonna freaking say, freaking love it. Look how light I, this is, people. Look how light this is. This I, is nothing. I can, oh my I can, gosh! I can hear my boss. Much. I can hear my bosses. <laughs> Yelling at me tomorrow, going, dude, you talked to the guy for an hour and 20 minutes and you never once said anything about Ampeg. So th that. thank you, Brian. Here we go. Product placement. I should have had it here the whole time. I don't know what I was thinking. It's right. light enough. I could have. <laughs> Sitting on your lap the whole time like that. But it was in the background. 
and yeah and i have the 12 inch over there too which has been killing with my upright i was gonna so say that, that would one, be upright. one arm one arm one arm oh. <laughs> what an endorsement and i'm not even in shape folks come on <laughs> <laughs> no, you and, and and I will say this: you have been a big supporter of the new Rocket Pay stuff. You've been using that live. Oh gosh, um, it's great. The the poor the, the, the PF yeah, fifty three. Yeah. I did a gig at the Ryman. Beautiful, just cool. freaking sounded amazing. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, when you know when you're on those big tours and you got people moving your gear for you, SVTs and and A ten cabs there too. You know, I'm counting. I'm counting that. <laughs> yeah i want that to happen <laughs> as long as you don't have to move it it's the best sounding yeah. amp in the world no it really, for sure 100 really yeah. yeah you know i like to lay those down too like, yes put yep. the 810 and lay them down Absolutely. man yep. that just that's a game changer for me was, once i started doing that i was like oh well yeah, yeah. I, I, I i i've been i've been on like, well, and, and you didn't get to meet him this time around, but Dom, the project manager, the product manager, he's, he is the Ampeg product manager. He and I have been talking about like on new cabinet designs, it's like, dude, we got to do something with the new cabinet so that when you do lay an A10 on its side, you can turn the logo. So it's still in the top left corner of the cabinet. Oh, yeah. Cause when you lay an A10 cab on its side, then, you know, the, the logo, sure. the badge is cattywampus, as we say, you know? But yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big I'm a big adopter of that as well. Lay the cab on its side. That way, there you get that whole side of the cabinet vibrating with the stage and everything. Yeah, so. that's the that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm reading a actually we do have a comment here from from John Ooh. saying thank thanks for your work on Kira Small's album. She's a good friend and had a great oh, had wow. great things to say about you. Cheers. Right you on. Doing? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a while ago, but yeah, that was a fun one. It was uh, just a quick couple day session there too, and just was that a national session as well? It was, and uh, she actually went to Berkeley, so oh, that okay. could be the connection here. But okay. uh, yeah, 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 she's killer. Cool. She did several house concerts at our place too. Also did one with Brian Beller when they were together. Great people. Oh, there you go. So yep. Brian Beller too. Yeah. Yeah, we just saw we just saw Brian. Uh, he was here in town with uh, with Satriani. Okay. Actually, he was here with Satriani, and then he was here with um, um, that's okay. It's, I'm I'm having old timers busy. <laughs> hey, Haji. Actually, I'll do, I could do it right here. I think I can do it right here. Let's put Brian's um. Let's put Brian's URL on the screen too, as well. Oh, cool. Thanks. Aristocats. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, John. Yeah, Aristocats. There you go. Yeah, yeah I got to update my uh, my bio, but uh, yeah. You can also yeah. see, uh, if you look on all music as well, you can find okay. some stuff more current. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. Well, man, it's been awesome catching up with you finally, you know. Likewise, um, man. Yeah. Yeah. Miss you. That's same here. <laughs> I, I promise I will get down to Nashville eventually. Um, and and I and I'll try not to be one of those guys that all you Nashvilleians are like oh, another transplant. <laughs> but, <laughs> Man, we'd we'd welcome you with open arms here. I know you would. I know you would. And it's like like I said, this this time in New England, in the winter time, it's like my wife and I are looking for places to uh, to snowbird during the winter. So yeah. at at some point. Who knows? Maybe I got to brush up on those 400 songs so I can at least get some work on Broadway during the winter time. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Good I'll, luck, my friend. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll have to call some of my Broadway buddies to get that songbook from them. But uh, yeah, yeah it's been great catching up with you, Brian. Thank you so much. Uh, for everybody watching, thanks for chiming in and, and catching us here at SVT Time. Uh, I think we're going to take a little bit of a break through the holidays. Uh, come January, um, we'll have we'll have everybody post. But I, I think January we got um, <laughs> Mark uh, Mark Pacificar and uh, and and uh, Zach Rippy is coming on in January. So and like he, like he's got a baby boy in his lap there. Brian's whole is that fifteen inch? That's a one fifteen. That's, that's, that's one fifteen, right? Yeah. Yeah, hey, you got to be kidding me. What other 15 can you do that with? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
So, all right, folks. And, oh, thank you, uh, thank you, Aaron, for keeping us in check in the background. And Haji as well for, for posting all the comments here and everything. And happy holidays, everybody. Have a safe, peaceful, healthy, happy, whatever you do to all celebrate that. the holidays, have that. So, <laughs> thanks, guys. We'll see you.